In this video, I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step method to compute a very challenging integral, which is 1 over sine x. So we're going to start by applying some identities and create things that are going to be a bit easier to integrate. So we're going to start with the double angle identity that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. And we can also say that theta is equal to x over 2. We're just making that up. We're just saying that the value theta is going to be equal to half of this value x. There's nothing controversial about that. It's just we are taking control and saying we're going to have this. And so that means that you're going to get this identity. And all we've done is replace the theta with x over 2. There is nothing wrong with doing this, and it will actually help us later on. So we can substitute, and we can actually do a slightly different integral. Instead of doing the integral of 1 over sine x, we are going to do this different integral here using our identity. And it may look like we've made it more difficult, but actually we're making it a bit simpler. So we're going to do a bit more work on this integral. So we're worrying now about our changed form that we've used the identity for. We can also recognize our Pythagorean identity, which is your sine squared plus your cosine squared equals 1. But remember, we've decided that theta is going to be x over 2 to keep us working in x because we've got a dx on the integration. So what we can say is that we've also got this identity. And we can substitute this in because we've got all of this equals 1. So we can replace the 1 here with this expression here. So we do the substitution and we get something that actually looks even worse, but it actually isn't worse. It will slowly start working its way to an answer. So we have what looks like a fairly horrible expression. So we're going to do some more work on this fairly horrible expression and see if we can make it slightly nicer. So obviously, you've got this big numerator here, and that naturally can be split up. So we're going to take this 2 and take it outside the integration as a constant, and we're going to take this numerator and split it up. So the sine squared is going to be on 1, and then the cosine squared is going to be the other. And we can see that we've got some cancellations. We've got a sine here and a sine squared here. We've got a cos squared here and a cos here, so we can cancel those out. So we've just done the cancellations, and we've split it into two fractions. So we can also remember some of our identities, and this is sine over cosine, so that's going to give us a tangent, and this here is our cosine over sine, so this is going to give us 1 over tangent, which is our cotangent. We're going to be integrating all of this. So we've got this integration here. And we're going to let u equal x over 2. So we're doing a substitution here. And we're going to find the derivative of that. So du dx equals a half. We want to replace this dx here. So we rearrange this and we get dx equals 2 du. And when we substitute all of this together, we replace x over 2 with u and we replace dx with 2 du. This will let us integrate with u, which is going to make things easier. So we're going to be doing this integration now, which gives us this result. So we've actually turned it from something fairly horrible into something reasonably nice. The integral of tan is, of course, ln of sec, uh, your secant there. And then you've got your cotangent, which integrates to the natural logarithm of sine. And we get the constant of integration. This isn't our final answer, so we need to do a little bit more work. Firstly, We've let u equal x over 2, so we can substitute x over 2 for u. Then we need to simplify this a bit further. So we can use the property of the logarithm. So when we're adding logarithms, it's like multiplying these two things. So we multiply those two, and we have not changed anything. This is just using the rules of logarithms. We can then notice that our tan theta is sine over cosine. And if we split that up a little bit, we get 1 over cos times sine. 1 over cosine is secant, and then we're left with our sine there. And you see this is similar to this. We've got secant times sine, and we've got secant times sine. So we can actually replace that with tangent, because tan theta equals secant theta times sine theta. And likewise, these two things times together is actually going to be our tan. So we put tangent in there. And we're getting really close to our answer. And so we can see that the integral of 1 over sine x dx is simply this expression, which is the natural logarithm of your tan of x over 2 plus c. And so that is how you integrate sine x, 1 over sine x step by step. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and thank you very much for watching.